In this video, I'll show you how to set up a brand new Flutter app using Flutter 2.2.2. And since the setup is actually quite easy, I'm also gonna show you how to build out the base layout for the homepage of the Decider app. So let's get started. All right, so in Android Studio, we have a new Flutter project start here. We're going to wanna to go with Flutter application and then click next. Then we can name our project and we're gonna be calling this the Decider. And the rest of this looks good to me. Then we can click next. And you're also going to want to make sure the package name is a unique name. I believe I might already be using the decider one on the production version of this, but I, so I'm going to add the YT for YouTube right there. Keep both these boxes checked and then hit finish. This is going to actually generate up the project for us here in Android Studio. If you've been following along with the channel, you might be surprised to see that we are now using dark mode. Yes, that is the case. We are gonna be using dark mode for this entire new course. First thing we should do here is just run the app. So we're gonna choose this iPhone 12 simulator over here and just hit run on this. While that's loading, I do wanna show you the version of Flutter we're using. So if you just check Flutter version like that, you can see we're on Flutter 2.2.2, which is the current stable channel of Flutter. And that is what we will be using for the entirety of this new Decider course, or until a new major version is released, then we'll, we'll update as needed. But yes, this is the version we will be using. You can see the app runs as you would expect. So all of that is looking good. We now have our app created, but we wanna actually change this UI a bit. In this video, we're going to just go ahead and make the UI look like this. None of these actions are actually gonna work and this is all just gonna be static data at this moment, but let's go ahead and set up this page, this homepage here, and then in future videos, we'll actually get everything wired up and working. We so will currently we are in main.dart. We're not gonna to wanna to actually write all this in main.dart. We're going to wanna break out some new files and actually create a whole new home view and put all that code in there for the home view. Let's go ahead and add four new packages here, which are currently gonna be empty, but this is typically what I do at the beginning of a project. We're going to have four new packages. They're going to be the views package, the services, the models, and extensions. Those will be like the four main categories of files that we're gonna have. Another way to potentially keep this organized is to, within this views package, have a package for each of the views. So for instance, the home view could have a sub package within views, and then you can have all of the files for the home view in there. This app though is actually gonna be pretty simple. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just create a new Dart file and call it the home view. So now within this, we can create a stateful widget and it will be the home view. And then we will need to import material, which if you do option enter on a Mac, you can import material. Now this is just a container, so nothing would really be showing if we had if we do have the app like this. So really what we're gonna use here is a scaffold. So we can go ahead and add a scaffold here. And then the scaffold is going to take an app bar and that's where we can give it the app bar with a title. And that title is just going to be a text object. And then we can call that the title of it decider. And that is good for now. If we go back to the main.dart now, when our app is currently running right now, you can see it runs my app. And then we go if we go into this class, my app, you can see it's a stateless widget. And then we get this comment here that this is the root of our application. We're just gonna go ahead and delete that, but it is true, this is the root of our application. You can see it is a material app here with the title of Flutter Demo. We're going to wanna to change this title to be the decider. And then you'll see we have some theme data here. The primary color here, we're going to change to red, which is going to be the color of our Decider app. Now the home here is, you can see, being passed to a My Home page with the title of Flutter Demo Home Page. This we're going to change to the Home View. And the Home View currently has no parameters that are needed, so we just call home view like that. Now we do need to import the home view onto the main.dart. So if you option enter, you'll see the option to import the, the package home view, which is simply just going to import that up here. If you save this now, you'll see we do get that decider title up here, which is being loaded from our home view. 
Now you'll notice we do still have all this code down here for the my home page, which was being loaded earlier. We can go ahead and just delete that because we are not going to need it anymore. And same thing with the state for that, we are no longer going to need that. So you can see our main dot dart is now much, much smaller. And we also have this much smaller home view. One thing we can do real quickly is remove this debug flag, which really doesn't serve any good purpose. So you can do that by setting the debug show checked mode banner to false. And you'll see that now just went away. All right, so now let's go ahead and again, just build out the home view to look like this. So we can start with the app bar up here and just add these two icons. We're not actually gonna link them to anything yet, but we can just place the icons there as a placeholder. So within the app bar, which is just representative of this whole red area up here, we can have the title, but then we can also have actions and actions take an array. And then within that array, we can give it any number of elements. So the elements we're actually gonna be using here are gesture detector. And that essentially is going to be like a button. So then within here, this has two parameters that it needs. It's gonna need the on tapped, which currently we're just going to leave blank. And the second thing it needs is a child, which is going to be what is displayed. So for us, we're going to use an icon. You could also use text if you like, but an icon is probably best here. So we're going to use the icons of, for the first one, we are going to use a shopping bag. Not sure this is actually the best icon for this, but we will stick with it for now. Then we can copy all of that and just paste it again. And since we're going to leave this blank as well, there's nothing to change there, but we will change the icon to the history icon. So if we hot reload this, you can see it looks decent, but it's not exactly what we want. These are kind of squished over to the right here, but this can be easily fixed with some padding. So let's wrap this gesture detector in padding and set it to a actually only padding on the right. So right, and then let's increase it to about 20. Now we will do the same thing below. So just wrap this in padding as well. And if we hot reload that, you'll see our icons are now displaying essentially the same as our example app over here. Now we can move on to the body. So we're going to just minimize app bar there and start the body of the scaffold. Now, because we're not gonna have any sort of bottom bar down here, we do wanna make sure we use the safe area here because text or anything could overflow down below this. So all that to say, start with a safe area here. And that's pretty simple. It doesn't really do anything other than prevent that overflow. And now with the child of the safe area, it can just be a container. And this container we really only need so that we can set the width of this and we're going to set the width to be the width of the screen. We can do that with a media query and we just need to call of context and then give it the size and the width. And now the child of this container is going to be a column. And the reason we're going to use a column is because all of the information that we want in here is essentially is essentially just a bunch of stuff in a column. So each of these elements can just be placed within our column and kind of listed out vertically. So the column will take a children array and then this is where we can give our widgets within the column. So the first thing is just the text that is going to give us the number of decisions. So, and we can just put a placeholder number there and it's actually decisions left is what we want this to say. So if you save that, you'll see it does pop up immediately. We're going to quickly wrap this in some padding and it's really just going to be that default padding is enough just to bring it from the top there a little bit. So the main part of this view is going to be this form here. And so since the form is going to contain a little bit more complex code than just this smaller text with padding. We're going to create this as a separate contained widget and then just call it from within this body. This will keep the code a little bit simpler and easier to read. So we will call this the build question form. 
And down within the build state, we can go ahead and define this. This will return a column because it does have three elements that we want to stack up. So return the column here. And then for the children, there will be those three elements. The first one is just going to be the text. And we do need to give this some style. So the style here is just going to increase the font. We can use the theme headline four here, and that will increase that font for us. If we put a semicolon here, it will remove that error as well. If we save this, you'll see we do get that now displaying up there in a larger font. So that's good. The second thing is going to be that actual text field. And this text field will have a few additional parameters that we're gonna to wanna to add, but for right now, we can just do the decoration and set the input decoration and give it the helper text that reads enter a question. If you save that, you'll see the text field takes up the entire screen size. So we do wanna just wrap that in padding. The final thing we need here is the button. So we're gonna use the elevated button class here. The on press for now, we can just print clicked. And the child here is going to be a text value of ask. The on press here is going to need to actually be a bit more of a function. And if we format that, everything should be lining up. So if you save that, we now have the button You'll notice though, this is all shoved up to the top. So we can fix that back up in our actual scaffold body build by adding some spacers. So we add a spacer above and below the, the build question form. Let's see, it does center it a bit. We are going to add another text area down here, which is going to then kind of push this back up. So that final text area is essentially just going to give the account type, which currently right now is going to be free. And if you save that, we are looking essentially like how we would like. If you did want to add a little bit more to the spacer on the bottom, because if you look at this, you'll see there's kind of a bit more space down here. You can simply do that with the flex here and we'll set that to maybe three. All right, this is looking good. Our app is essentially laid out now how we need it to be laid out. So the next steps we can do are connect this to Firebase and start getting this form actually working. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's gonna be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube for free are gonna be that base app. And this is part of that. But if you wanna see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases, and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. And right now at the launch of this video, you can get the course on pre-sale with a 30% discount. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com backslash monetize. If you missed the pre-sale, no worries, you can still get a discount and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.